One of the biggest questions on the minds of SpaceX fans that have been following the testing and development of the Starship definitely is, when will Super Heavy be launched? This is because in just over a year, SpaceX has scrapped five official booster prototypes, BN1, BN2, BN3, BN4, and BN5. Delays after delays. However, now we can really hope that the current Super Heavy is finally ready for launch in July. Why? What has SpaceX changed to get to this monumental stage? Let's expose it all in today's episode of the Alpha Tech Channel. Well, SpaceX is no stranger to scrapping prototypes that are no longer a fit for their purpose. Elon Musk shows off SpaceX's first Starship Super Heavy booster on March 18, 2021. At that time, he said that Booster 1 is a production pathfinder figuring out how to build and transport 70-meter tall stage, Booster 2 will fly. The wishes were good, but reality was harsh. 16 months after its launch, no Super Heavy prototype has ever flown. BN1 was the first Super Heavy prototype, and it was designed to be a pathfinder and not intended to be flight tested. It was fully stacked inside the high bay on the 18th of March. However, on the 30th of March, 2021, Musk stated BN1 would be scrapped in favor of BN2 and would not roll out to the launch site and perform testing. BN2 was planned as the second Super Heavy booster prototype. However, some sections were renamed BN2.1 and BN3. Soon, test tank BN2.1 had been officially torn down. The cleanup was complete at the launch site. Next, let's talk about BN3 or Booster 3. Once hinting to be the first Super Heavy booster to make an orbital flight, Booster 3 was actually only used for ground test. And on 15th of August 2021, Booster 3 was partially scrapped. And on January 9th, 2022, the remains of Booster 3 began to be removed and cleanup was completed two days later. The saddest? Booster 4. Booster 4 became visible on July 3rd. Musk ordered several hundred SpaceX employees at Hawthorne to relocate to Boca Chica to accelerate the development of SN20, BN4, and the orbital launch platform in an attempt to put Starship systems on the pad by the 5th of August. BN4 was fully stacked on August 1st with a full complement of 29 engines installed on August 2nd. Grid fins were added to support atmospheric reentry testing, but notably the grid fins on Booster 4's test article did not fold down for launch. Then especially SN20 was stacked on top of Booster 4 on August the 6th for a fitting test, making it the largest rocket ever. But this doesn't save it from being retired. And this is Booster 5. Its chunks are all over the place at the ring yard. And the glory now goes to Booster 7. Unsurprisingly, Elon Musk added many new special features to this prototype. Finally, let's start with an interesting change improvised by Musk, Eulage Gas Thrusters. Last month, Tim Dodd, who goes by the handle Everyday Astronaut on YouTube, was invited to the Starbase facility for a new updated SpaceX. This time, Elon and Tim take a closer look at SpaceX's ongoing designs for thrusters, which is possibly the most important element of the basic rocket design. It's here where Elon revealed that a seemingly innocuous question from Tim's last visit led to an actual spark of genius, further improving the team's efforts. Tim's question to Elon essentially was about the need for cold gas thrusters. Instead of using burdensome, nitrogen-laden propellant tanks, why wasn't SpaceX instead simply redirecting rocket fumes from the main engine? It occurred to me while I was explaining it to you. I was like, wait, what are we doing? To simplify a great deal of rocket science, the basic idea here surrounds the existing design for maneuvering thrusters. According to SpaceX, the Falcon 9 is equipped with a total of eight nitrogen cold gas thrusters that are mounted towards the top of the first stage. There's one pod on each side of the rocket, each containing four thrusters. Like the gimbaled main engines, the cold gas thrusters are used to control the orientation of the rocket. You can actually see these in action when back to SpaceX conducted tests on the Falcon 9 platform in 2017. Elon Musk has now confirmed that Tim's curiosity indeed led to one of the biggest improvements in their latest rocket design. And this is exactly the addition. Tim Dodd, you're amazing. Next, unlike the previous, Booster 7 sported an impressive suite of 33 Raptor 2 engines on its aft section. 
Instead of the 29 Raptor V1s installed on Super Heavy Booster V4, Booster 7 is designed to support up to 33 Raptor V2 engines. While the V2 design significantly simplifies Raptor's design to make it easier to build, install, and operate, it also substantially boosts maximum thrust from around 185 tons to at least 230 tons. In theory, Super Heavy B7 with a full 33 Raptor V2 engines is capable of operating at that claimed thrust level. Booster 7 could theoretically produce 40% more thrust than Booster 4. B4, however, has yet to attempt a single static fire. With Booster 7 now perhaps just a week or two away from test readiness, SpaceX finally has a viable replacement capable of both carrying the flame forward and kicking off the qualification of the first prototype designed to use Raptor V2 engines. Besides, Booster 7 features a number of other design changes, including sleeker raceways, external conduits that protect wiring and smaller plumbing, a different layout of the pressure vessels, hydraulic power units, and an umbilical panel installed on its aft with significant changes to the aero covers that slot over the aft hardware. The vehicle now has all four chines, and the hydraulic power units, the HPUs, are also covered with their respective aero covers. Teams also appear to have installed debris and heat shields around the engines. Finally, the substantial modification made to Booster 7 is arguably a pair of strake-like aero covers. A series of sharp edge aero covers are now expected to slot over the top of two new pairs of five composite overwrap pressure vessels, or COPVs, that run about a third of the way up the Booster 7 tanks. It's possible they'll function a bit like strakes, fixed wing-like structures designed to improve aerodynamic stability. In comparison, Super Heavy B4 has four sets of two COPVs spaced evenly around the outside of its engine section. OWL created a very informative render of the major updates on B7's COPV array. All thanks for his hard work. And don't forget to support him by following his Twitter account as well as his YouTube channel. It would be a pity if you missed these amazing 3D renders. After all, Booster 7 is currently SpaceX's brightest star, and hopefully it'll soon pass all tests and go into orbit. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. And don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section. Everyone's support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.